name is Troy Hearn. Uh, I wear, wake up back there, Dan, I see you back there. Um, I wear many hats in the state of Kentucky when it comes to bicycling and walking. Right now, I'm wearing my mountain bike hat, and I forgot my mountain bike hat. I actually had a real mountain bike hat, uh, but uh, I do have a real mountain bike hat. Uh, so the work I do with mountain biking is I have been involved with Kimba, the Kentucky Mountain Bike Association, uh, for well over 20 years now. Uh, it is a statewide organization. We are a 501c3 uh, that was established in 1993. Uh, we are the only true statewide bicycling uh, advocacy organization that there is uh, right now. Uh, there's a lot of really strong regional uh, programs and city programs. A lot of mountain biking goes on at the di different levels, uh, but we are uh, Kimba, the Kentucky Mountain Bike Association, uh, and we primarily just work on uh, mountain bike uh, natural surface trails. A lot of our trail systems uh, cohabitate uh, with uh, joggers, runners. Uh, one uh, trail in particular in Scott County, uh, one of our model trail systems that we built the trail and cohabitate with an equestrian trail system. Uh, we work with the uh, equestrian uh, two different uh, statewide equestrian groups uh, to do that and we use that as a model a lot uh, for a lot of our things that we do. Uh, mountain biking, well guess what, you're out there moving, your heart rate's up, uh, you're working your body, it's definitely a physical benefit, it's a social benefit. Uh, mountain biking, uh, oddly enough, when you're in the woods, you may not see somebody that's 40 feet in front of you <coughs> for the whole day. Uh, you know, that's just the nature of mountain biking. You're in the woods, there's trees, there's stuff this time of year. You just don't see folks out there doing it, so sometimes it's not as obvious that it is a social sport. As opposed to road cycling, somebody could be two miles down the road and you see them. You know, that's the carrot, right? You try to go catch them, you're on the road bike, you know. Uh, but the social aspect of mountain biking, a lot of it is before the ride and definitely after the ride. Uh, because if you lived through the mountain bike experience, uh, or if you got a little bit of blood or mud on you, uh, you're definitely going to show that off afterwards. Uh, and uh, for some reason, mountain bikers uh, like to drink beer a little bit more than road cyclists. I don't know why that is, but you can see that I resemble that remark. And then there's a lot of economic benefits also associated with, with mountain biking uh, specifically. Uh, who we are with Kemba, uh, we are everybody in the community for the most part. Uh, we probably spend more time working on the trails, I know Mickey and I do, and then we actually be riding the trails, especially this time of year. Uh, but different from road cyclists, uh, a lot of times we build our own infrastructure. We build our own trails. Uh, we have definite sweat equity into it. Uh, a lot of situations, a lot of the 34 trail systems in the state of Kentucky are maintained by Kemba as a whole. Uh, there are different chapters in different parts of the state. We have 34 trail systems that for the most part, uh, the Kimba organization uh, paid for all the structures to be built. They provided all the professional labor, knowledge, design, and so on. You know, we truly do uh, practice what we preach and build uh, and ride what we build. Uh, so we do everything to a very high level of standards. Uh, we, uh, as a Kimba, officially adopted uh, a level of standards from the National Park Service, International Mountain Bike Association, and America's Trails Group. Uh, they kind of tell you if you're going to build a bridge, uh, the, what the dimensions of the bridge should be. You know, if it's that long and if it's so high off the ground. If you're going to build any uh, man-made structure, uh, they kind of give you a, a guidance as to how that needs to be built. Uh, the bluegrass chapter, a little bit of plug for us. Uh, this is probably the best year I have seen for involvement uh, in our chapter. Uh, I work a lot with all the other chapters throughout the state, and I think the same thing is true uh, with all the chapters in the state right now, it's kind of a different dynamic. I'm used to having all this stuff to do and just a handful of people to do it. Uh, but now this year we've got all this stuff to do and we have a ton of people that want to help. Uh, so now you have to manage the people. Uh, but these are just the folks involved. Uh, obviously with uh, the work that we do, I couldn't do it alone, especially in, the, in this region. Uh, but we have uh, board officers, we're a, a legit agency uh, entity. Uh, we have uh, board members, we have uh, trail stewards. Uh, we have a checklist as to uh, when, why, how, and where we would develop a trail system. And one of the items on that checklist is we have to have a dedicated person or persons uh, that are gonna be the trail steward for that trail. Uh, they don't necessarily have to be the person out there doing all the digging and building and so on, but that person 
is primarily responsible for the trail and if they have to coordinate and meet with landowners or elected officials or so on, the trail steward is often the person that does that. Um, and every once in a while, the trail steward, like Roger Wilson at Life Adventure Center in Versailles, uh, he is out in the woods every day of the week, like five hours a day. He said, I'll go do that. And he kind of sends me to go meet with the people and do the other work. So sometimes you do have the trail steward just the crazy person in the woods, and then they send people <laughs> like me to talk to them. Uh, the Bluegrass chapter has about, about 100 paid members. Uh, we have over 2,000 members on our Facebook page. Uh, the Louisville chapter is probably the biggest chapter in the state as far as paid members of the chapter, and they have about 5,000 people on their Facebook page. Combined total as is this morning, we have 37,000 people on all of the mountain bike oriented uh, Facebook pages that we have in our state. Uh, a lot of the folks actually, you know, like live in one part of the state and they like or they're on the other page because we all travel to go ride. That's what we do. And that's where the <coughs> economics comes into it. Uh, I ride Capitol View Park in Frankfort quite a bit and I get bored with it. So I drive and go to Skullbuster in Scott County or go to Life Adventure Center for sale. If I'm ever in the western part of the state, I go to Halls Ridge and I go to South Hollow and I travel and I go specifically uh, to go ride those trail systems. Uh, this is an example, another example of who we are. Uh, mountain biking, light road riding, is one of those disciplines of a, a physical activity that literally, as soon as you're able to walk, you can ride something like this. This is like a scoot bike or a strider bike, something along that lines. It's probably easier to use a scoot bike or a straddle bike than it is to actually walk when you're about two or three. Uh, but I wish they had those around when I was a kid. Uh, but we have men, we have women from ages four to 80. My dad uh, just turned 70 this year and he's still an avid mountain biker. He actually likes to mountain bike more than he likes to road ride. Uh, but being that it's gonna probably rain all this week, he'll be forced to go on his road bike, which he does anyway. Uh, but that's just a snapshot of all the different activities we do. Uh, much like the road clubs in the state, uh, we improve ourselves every year. Uh, we have started to teach uh, rider skill clinics uh, throughout the year. Um, those are open throughout the state. We do those all over the state. We have members of every chapter uh, in the state have become level one, two, or three skills instructors. We send our own people there to do those skills instructions. Uh, every year or so, we do uh, safety equipment classes, like we're gonna be using chainsaws out there kind of want people to be trained how to use a chainsaw, what safety equipment they need. Uh, we also use a, a sustainable build, building techniques, techniques for the trails. We have an EMBA will come in, other organizations will come in, and they'll hold classes on how to build a sustainable trail. Uh, so, uh, uh, like I said, a little different from the road organizations that do the road riding, you know, we, we, we build our own stuff that we, that we maintain and ride, and so we want to be well trained when we do that. For the bluegrass area, for now, uh, these are all the trail systems that the Bluegrass chapter manages. Uh, we have Skullbuster in Scott County. Uh, we've got uh, West Sixth uh, Brewery, that's uh, here in town. They bought a farm in Franklin County a couple, three years ago, and uh, they invited us to build a trail system out there. It's new, it's only about a year old, but there are trails out there. Uh, that was a lot of fun, and surprise, surprise, they have a tap room right there on site, so after you ride, uh, you can go get a beer for your current theme. Uh, we have a Capitol View Park there in Frankfort, right in the middle of town, uh, Life Adventure Center in Versailles, uh, right on the uh, Woodford County Anderson County line. We have Veterans Park uh, in Lexington. And then I didn't update my map because it's not official yet, but we have some other trail systems. We've got this big hole right over here all around the bluegrass area, but we're starting to kind of fill uh, those holes. Uh, so that was not necessarily my doing, but I may have investigated that. Uh, mountain biking is part of your city's master plan. Uh, if you have a trail system and it's anywhere within your urban center and you think somebody may ride five to ten miles on their bike to go to it, then you have to incorporate that into your master planning uh, because if you had, you know, a thousand people a year that are just riding wherever they think they should go to go mountain biking, you might want to develop some infrastructure in there to provide a little bit more uh, safety and accommodation for them. Uh, but mountain biking is growing. Uh, oftentimes when uh, Mickey and I talk to organizations and local governments, will say if you've got 20 to 40 acres or more, we can do something with that. Uh, I do have some organizations throughout the state that they only had about five or six acres of wooded area. And they're like, what can we do with that? Well, hello, pump track, uh, float trail. I mean, there's stuff. Mountain bikers are very creative. 
uh, kind of the history of mountain bikers in general is we rode anywhere we thought we could get away with it. Back in the 80s when mountain biking first started, if there was an old trail somewhere, that was our mountain bike trail. If there was a park that had land on the periphery of the park that we didn't think anybody would notice if we built trails there, that's what we did. We were renegades. We either used what we thought we could use and get away with, or we built trail in places we thought we could get away with it and nobody would notice. So that's kind of how we started. But now we're legitimate. We have a checklist of how we build a trail, when and where and why and how. Uh, but it is definitely part of the overall cycling master plan for the communities and for the states. Uh, how do you know where to go mountain biking? That can be a little overwhelming nowadays. Uh, when I first started mountain biking back in the 80s, yes, mountain bikes were alive back in the 80s, uh, you really just had to go to a local bike shop uh, and you just had to kind of, I guess, find where to go. Uh, the internet probably wasn't around in the 80s. I don't think so. I didn't have it then. Uh, but nowadays there are a gazillion websites you can go uh, to Trail Links, MTV Projects, Trail Ports, All Trail, Single Track. Uh, you can go to the Kimba, KYMBA.org uh, website. You can click there to the different chapters. We have maps and so on. Uh, but nowadays with just Google, you can Google mountain biking in Kentucky and there's you know tens of hundreds of thousands of sites that'll pop up on there. Uh, we work with all of the local parks departments in our areas. With my daytime job, I'm able to work from my desk with all the state and federal parks uh, throughout the state. We now have collaborative agreements and procedures for state parks and federal parks as to how, why, when, and where we would be able to develop trails in that area. And Western Kentucky has a really uh, advanced from that. Uh, once again, some of the things we do throughout the year, uh, we do rider skills clinics, trails classes, uh, safety equipment classes for like the chainsaws. We do uh, a take a kid mountain biking events. Uh, we have social events throughout the year because uh, we know that one of the best ways to spread the word is that you know we need to incorporate a social activity along with the biking because there's different levels of riders and some folks want to ride the crazy stuff some folks just want to go ride you know an easy path uh, so we do a lot of social events throughout the year now we have a social committee which is nice we have extra people to help us with that uh, we try to take multiple folks when we meet with landowners and managers we try to have some kind of a meeting with all the landowners and managers once a year to let them know what our plan is for the next year and so on. Uh, we now have a uh, legit uh, treasurer, Danielle Hill on the back. We now have a budget uh, for each of the trail systems each year. Uh, previous it was just kind of like, hey, do we have enough money to buy that? Yeah, let's do it, okay. And uh, I didn't know how much a parking lot cost to make. You know, uh, local government planning meetings, uh, one of the folks that meets a lot with uh, the, the Frankfurt city government uh, Woodford County, Fayette County, uh, you can go to some meetings in Louisville sometime. Uh, we've really elevated the mountain bike organization in the last probably seven years uh, to where we have meetings, we document the notes from the meetings, we put those online, we have all our best practices and standards are online. Uh, so we really, really have raised the bar for ourselves in the last however so many years. And then that's just some of the uh, activities we do throughout the year, some of the clinics we do. Uh, we've got the women's. Uh, Mount Bike Skills Clinic is uh, Saturday uh, at Capitol View Park in Frankfurt. We have a men's clinic uh, the next day on Sunday. Uh, the uh, kids uh, Take Your Kid Mountain Biking event uh, is in October. Uh, I was able to have my dad, myself, my son, and my granddaughter all at a mountain bike trail event uh, last year. Uh, so we won a prize for that. I'm not sure I didn't get the prize. I think my dad took it, but because he still rides. Uh, and uh, this one right here, this was a trail work day we did many, many years ago. I'm trying to uh, figure out what kind of album I could produce musically uh, to put that on there, but it probably wouldn't sell very many copies. From Greenways, anything you're riding a mountain bike on, I consider that mountain bike. Uh, a lot of people own mountain bikes. For whatever reason, that's the bike they decided to get. They may just ride the Greenway trails or the Legacy Trail or the Louisville Trails, or you know, they may just try to ride pavement, but they are mountain biking. Uh, with the uh, Louisville Loop and the Floyd's uh, Fork area, uh, and the uh, gentleman this morning was talking about the, the, the uh, Louisville Trails, he really didn't mention the mountain biking. They have some world-class mountain biking trails right off of the paved uh, multi-use trail. 
Uh, so if mountain bikers are riding the pavement on their mountain bike, and being a mountain biker, you look over and you see trails right there, guess what you're gonna do? You're gonna go exploring. So that's what mountain bikers do. Uh, there's a uh, pump tracks, there's BMX. Uh, we have one of our uh, board members is a, uh, uh, a nationally ranked BMX racer. Uh, she takes her BMX bike to the mountain bike trails uh, and she can still kick my butt on that even with a little, little wheel. Uh, but I often say that mountain biking is a segue to other kinds of riding. It's like a gateway drug to become a road cyclist. I was a mountain biker first and I really didn't like road riders. I thought they were snobs and they all shaved their bodies and they were weird. And, uh, <laughs> but then I got a road bike and then I became a road cyclist. And then, uh, then I actually raced for a while and I became the body shaping. You know, uh, but mountain biking is a segue into road riding and other types of riding. Uh, and then oftentimes road biking, once you get your road fitness and you see people like me talk about mountain biking, uh, it's a, a road bike. Road biking can be a segue also uh, in a mountain biking as well uh, for land use for areas of your city or the county that may be in a floodplain or maybe some weird area of land that nobody wants. They don't want to use it. Mountain bikers will take it and we will make stuff out of it. Uh, Mickey would give you an example of some weird stuff that they've used and incorporated it into trail features. And now that's probably why people want to go there is because of the weird stuff. Uh, you know, it's simple, uh, all ages. A lot of people don't like to ride their bike on the road with cars. And trees don't move as fast as cars. So they they can move. They can move. Uh, but a lot of people just like riding dirt trails. Uh, and then what we try to incorporate statewide is we have trails for everybody. We try to have the really easy trails, the flow trails. You know, it's wide. It's easy to get around. And then something that we've really tried to do in the last couple of years is the other end of the spectrum is the really advanced stuff that most people think, oh, you're crazy to even try that. But nowadays the technology for the bikes are at such a high level that you would be amazed what you can ride on a high level bike. I mean, it, it's, it's really crazy. The skills classes that we do, I have seen people come in as a complete beginner. And by the end of the day, they were riding their bike off of stuff almost this, this high off the ground. I mean, I was amazed at their level of confidence just after a one-day skills class. Uh, but that is a testament really to how good our instructors are. When we bring instructors in for the skills classes, the trail building classes, and for the power equipment safety classes, these are some of the nation's leading instructors that come and teach our folks. So it's really, really good. And also with uh, our public parks, We've noticed that mountain bikers use the trail system year round. People riding the, using the baseball fields and softball fields and the soccer field and uh, you know all those other facilities, they are very, very seasonal versus mountain biking year round. So we can show justification of use uh, year round. Uh, build it and they will ride, uh, that's true. If you build the right trail, the right kind of trail to a sustainable standard and you put it in the right spot uh, quickly, you'll be like, oh man, we should have built that parking lot thicker that parking lot that I mentioned that we built. Uh, we just need to know where the place is. Now we're gonna be legit, and we're not gonna just go out and randomly build renegade trails, but boy, once we get the green light on building the trails, we're gonna go in and do it, so watch out. Uh, helps uh, develop the area, organize the people. We do need at least one person in that area that's gonna be the trail steward. But once we have that one person, we'll load them up with all the resources, supplies, and everything that we can get our uh, hands on to go help them out and then uh, at the end of the day really all we all just want to go ride bikes uh, so uh, it's probably going to be wet and muddy in the next couple of days uh, but I'm still going to go ride my bike uh, because that's what I love yes sir can you are there any issues of liability I'm glad you mentioned that uh, Kentucky is one of the fortunate states that we have a recreational land use law if uh, any property that's open for public use as long as it's free for public use, whether that be a park or a private ownership, a private property, if they don't charge any money for the public to go and use it, and all of the man-made structures are built to a certain level of readiness, then uh, there's really no liability issue if somebody were to get hurt on a mountain bike trail. 
Uh, but the caveat there is like if you have a bridge, you got to make sure that bridge is in good shape, it stays in good shape, and it's built within those standards of the, the entities that I mentioned earlier. Somebody can try to sue you, but they will not win. Uh, we've learned our lessons from other states. Uh, Indiana primarily, we worked a lot with the Hoosier Mount Lake organization, and uh, their organization got sued about five years ago, and all of the organizations in the country that had their insurance through a certain entity, we all lost our insurance. So we had to kind of all restructure ourselves, and our state organization uh, developed our own way to do that. And uh, right around that time, Kentucky passed that recreational land use law. Uh, so as long as you follow the steps that we've highlighted in our, you know, guidance that we give to folks, uh, liability is really not an issue. Uh, but once you start charging money to do it, it's a whole different ball game, and you have to have separate liability insurance. Bowling Green had the same concerns when they built the skate park, and it's got a pretty advanced skate park, and that was one of the holdups, and finally they worked through that. And they've had, when they first opened the first few months, they had some pretty serious accidents, one of them made the news and all that, but now everyone's learned, and the liability's there, and you take that at risk when you jump in that park, you know that it's a risk that you're taking by being in the park. And we do try to provide signage you know, some of the trail system, it gets a little silly with how many signs you have to put up. You know, uh, I guess people generally are stupid. <laughs> when they get on a mountain bike trail or on a big mountain bike, they must get really, really brave. Uh, but if, if you don't see where the trail goes, it's highly going downhill, it's real rocky, you know, hello. Uh, but these are just some of the, you know, we do single track trails, double track, cross country flow, theme parks with a lot of features, uh, pump tracks, uh, we just built a legit pump track in uh, Capitol View Park, which hope to make that even bigger this year. Uh, most of the stuff we build in our area is hand built. That's with just people and hand tools, and we go out there and build the trail. Uh, we have seen a lot of machine built trails over the years. Uh, Veterans Park uh, is a hand built trail, or is a machine built trail. The trail in Owensboro is a machine built trail. A lot of the stuff out in the western part of the state is a machine built trail, which is awesome. It just costs a whole lot more to do that. Uh, we have had very successful uh, funding uh, in our state, really part by private funding. Uh, the Bluegrass chapter, uh, we're, we're able to keep 100% of our dues, uh, but we only have 100 paid members, so there's only $2,500 a year from memberships. We're very fortunate that we've had some good corporate sponsorships uh, through uh, West Sick Brewery, uh, McDonald's, and some other entities. We also have some very affluent uh, members that like to mountain bike in our area, and I guilt them into becoming lifetime members for a thousand dollar fee, and so on. So, uh, but we have utilized some uh, federal funding sources, some state funding sources, and some other organizations that offer funding for that as well. Uh, but being a 501c3 uh, definitely helps there. And now I'm going to hold my questions, and I'm going to let Mickey load up his presentation here. Give you all just a couple minutes here while I get this loaded. Uh, while I'm I'm doing this. My name is Mickey Phillips. I kind of got, as he called, ball and hold to do this. Uh, about about two weeks ago, uh, Chip Winger, who's our vice chairman, and uh, Brad mm, Brad Burridge, who's our chairman, were supposed to be here, but they couldn't make it. I'm with Southwest Kendall, which is a division of what Troy has been talking about. We cover Bowling Green and the area surrounding Bowling Green. We also have a trail in Owensboro, which is called Ben Halls. I'll get into that some, a little bit later. But our mission is to create, enhance, and preserve great trail experiences. And what uh, what started our what started our uh, organization was about 2009 or so. There was a bunch of guys around the Bowling Green area who loved a mountain bike. Unfortunately, there was no trails. The closest trail to Bowling Green at that time was Gallatin, Tennessee, and that's about a, roughly an hour away. So they had to load up all their equipment and their gear, drive them to Gallatin, Tennessee, ride about nine miles and come back. Uh, they kept talking about it. They first called themselves the Kimba Bowling Green uh, chapter in 2009, but uh, as it progressed and resources and more people got involved, they came up to uh, 2012 and joined Emba, and that's when we became uh, Southwest Kimba. Some of the bookmarks we've been able to accomplish uh, through working with resources in some of our local areas. Uh, Mammoth Cave National Park, just up the road from Bowling Green, about 35, 40 minute drive, uh, had quite a bit of backcountry uh, that was not being used to its full potential as we saw as mountain bikers. And there was a uh, trail called uh, Big Hollow, which was a mixed use 
equestrian slash hiking trail. Uh, through conversations and, and through some of the, the resources that uh, Chip and some of the guys got talking about to the director, and they found there was a master plan for a mountain bike trail in Mash, uh, Na uh, Mammoth Cave National Park. Uh, so they talked and they said, why don't we take this one uh, and use it? And they facilitated the first bike optimized trail in Mammoth, Mammoth Cave National Park. We are the sole stewards of that particular trail. We are the only ones that go in there and we trim it we uh, improve it, we check for drainage, we do all our inspections on all the, the features to make sure that they're good and how it is what was called a beginning or intermediate trail. The park didn't want to get into advanced stuff because uh, they were concerned it being a national park and all that, so we kept it kind of low key, but it is a 13 mile total trail. And last year we were, we were fortunate enough to build a backcountry campsite. So now that taps into another industry it's called uh, bike packing, but I mean, that's a whole other story. But basically, you can pack all your camping gear on your bike, ride eight, 10 miles into the, the woods, and set up a tent in a big planned backwoods country area and just overlook the bluff for the night if you want. And in 2014, our big hauler trail uh, was our gateway trail. It was one of the first trails we ever got were involved with in that area. And it was called a gateway trail because it was the first uh, mountain bike park in a national uh, mountain bike trail in a national park. So it kind of like opened the door for other areas and other states to be able to do the same in national parks. After we built that one, we went to Dolan State Park, which is about 10, 15 minute drive from Mammoth Cave to the back country. It is about a nine mile uh, trail. It is an advanced trail. Uh, it has a lot of features in it that we are proud of. Uh, one of them is called the Omega Flow, and it's the only downhill flow in that area, and it was one of the first ones in the state. I have uh, on the walls, you'll notice some of the maps that we have of our trails, just to kind of give you an idea of what kind of uh, terrain and stuff we like to use for mountain bike trails. And keep in mind, most of the stuff we build ourselves. We do use, like he said, machine building, where we can, there are uh, companies that will come in at a fee and help you optimize some of the, the land and some of the bluffs and some of the things you encounter. Uh, but we partnered with uh, Kentucky State Parks, the Corps of Engineers, uh, Spectrum Trail Design is one of those companies I was speaking about. Uh, they will come in and build a trail, but there is some fees involved to do that. But they are really good at what they do. They have all the right equipment, and uh, they will usually negotiate time dates, and they will work with you, not say get out of our way. So you can have work hand in hand to build and design what you want. Uh, Southwest. Uh, Kimba, we're the caretakers for this trail. Like I said, the Omega Downhill Flow Trail, which that was the first flow trail in the state of Kentucky. And what I mean by flow trail is once you drop off, it's about a downhill drop for about a third of a mile. You can hit speeds up to 25 or 30 miles an hour if you're good enough and you get enough to hang on. Um, Brown River State Park was one of our latest accomplishments. Uh, we're proud of that one too. Uh, because kind of what Troy was talking about. If you give us 25, 30 acres of open woods, we're gonna do something with it. And uh, Twisted Oliver is one of those. It was a recreation area for the uh, Barren River Lake. All it was really was a playground, an amphitheater, and a boat ramp. And they had this 30 acre plot there. It was originally supposed to be a trail, but no one ever done anything with it. And it was, uh, it actually started by the field dirt that used to build the dam eons ago. And uh, we, the, the guy who helped us with start the trail in uh, Mammoth Cave is now one of the managers at Barrender Lake. So he said, hey, why don't you guys come do your work your magic over here because we have some land for you. But now keep in mind, this land was pretty much useless. There was a section of it called Buzzard's Roost and all you had there was buzzards roosting. I'm serious, and when we built the trail, we had to cover our noses because there was so much bird dew mm -hmm. on the hillside, uh, and it just about stunk us out. But we stuck to it, and this is all hand-built. We walked in with road hose and weed eaters and and just about any hand tool you can get your hands on, and we built this trail. And now it's a 3.1 mile twin loop trail. Uh, our chip, our vice chairman calls it re, uh, re cycling gravity and I have a if you guys want to see later uh, in a minute this is the trail here now and uh, as you see it's just a small plot right next to the river it's got some beautiful views uh, it's 3.1 miles and I'll get into this later but 
one of the things that mountain biking trails do, well, we always try to make them multiple use. So in other words, mountain bikes, trail runners, hikers, families can come to those places and use them. One of our uh, local running groups in Bowling Green has a yearly event where they do a six hour, 12 hour run. And they usually do that in the city of Bowling Green, but they run into some glitches this year. And they came out to our grand opening, took a look at our trail and said, hey, uh, would you guys mind if we have our event here this year? I said, no. Now, Grant, we had the grand opening of this trail in April. And the first weekend in September, it's gonna host one of the largest events it's had in that area already. Just that, that in the end of a trail, you already got an economic development. Rudy Mines Trail in Ben Halls is the one that uh, Troy was talking about. This is partially machine built trail. It is a 10 mile trail and it has yearly events. Uh, just did a race there a couple weeks ago. Now, races sound like, okay, what's, what's the deal about a race? Well, you figure, depending, most of the time you're going to get anywhere from 75 to 100 people to one race. That's $25 a pop. They bring their wallets, they bring their $3,000 bikes, they bring their money for groceries, they bring their money for restaurants, and the mountain bikers bring their money for beer. <laughs> <clears throat> this is a uh, <clears throat> Bone Green. We partnered with uh, City of Bone Green, so it's another one of our trails we're really happy with. We took Bone Green, Warren County, and a multiple organization trail. Uh, it's uh, going to be a multiple use park uh, because not only are we developing it, but so is the city of Bowling Green, and so is a riverfront development. They're wanting to eventually put in a greenway, uh, excuse me, a blueways uh, rapids course too. So this development, uh, let's see what that's next slide. I need to admit. Basically, uh, we're going to do a pump track and a downhill and something like that. Once again, hosting the events, bring in money with the small resources. As a Southwest Kimber uh, project, we do that many trails on very little of a budget. Uh, we do the Riverfront Park, which I just talked about. We keep Mammoth Cave going, Northern State Park, Burn River State Park. Uh, we have a new one projected in Burn River State Park that they've given us 150 acres. That map down there to the far left uh, is a proposed design for it. Uh, we're talking 150 acres. We're probably going to get 10 or 12 miles on that. And how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to go in there with rope hose, just like we've done all their trails. Uh, it'll take Twisted Oliver. Uh, we took about a year to build it from the time we started scratching dirt to the time we had our grand open. So hopefully we start scheduled to start building this next trail uh, in, in sometime this fall. Uh, also Long Fall Trail, which is a, uh, another one in the uh, Nolan Lake area. It's about, it's going to be another about 10 or 12 mile trail. Uh, talking about nasty stuff, as Troy was talking about, I'll tell you a little story and background about Low Hollow. Uh, years ago, I remember when I was a kid, uh, go through this bridge as you go into Bowling Green, and on either side of the bridge was a landfill, right next to the river. And that's all there was, just a bunch of garbage. They bring our, the local garbage, put it in there, seal it over. Well, eventually, they actually filled the landfill, sealed it up, and never used it again until a few years after that, somebody got the bright idea, let's put a go-kart trail in there. So they come in and they put a nice little paved loop, excuse me, and uh, they had go-kart races and attractions there for a while. That went into disrepair and grass grew up and the next thing you know, there's nothing there anymore. It became a park for the homeless camps. Uh, the homeless in the area would kind of congregate there, put up their tents. The drug dealers kind of like the area too, so they come in and conduct their business as did the prostitutes. So basically become a very nasty area from a landfill to a somewhat used back to a nasty area. Uh, 2012, 2013, when we started building trails as an organization, once again, what Troy said, you give us 20 or 30 acres, we're going to do something with it. The city of Bowling Green and Warren County said, let's improve this area, what can you do? We went in, uh, they got together with City of Bowling Green. Uh, they decided to make it in part of a greenways trail system that the City of Bowling Green was building. And since it branched into Warren County, they wanted to do something with the mountain bike side. So basically we took that 40 acres or 30 acres, made it smaller than that, and we built another trail, a 2.4 mile loop. Well, you say, how do you do that with all the stuff going on? Very simple. If you take an area like that and you put in positive energy and positive people coming in with positive impacts, 
then what happens? The negativity will run out. So fast forward to day and time, we have running events there. We have a race event, that, which is our annual fundraiser for our mountain bike association. Uh, it isn't a day go by, you don't come in and you see families walking their dogs and their kids and riding their bikes. So all that negative element has moved on. Yeah, those negative people don't like it when we're showing up. Yeah. They're ruining their <laughs> good time. Yeah. And Big Hollow, uh, I told you a little bit about that, but just to recap, it was not going to be a mountain bike trail at one point. Uh, they said we don't have the manpower, we don't have the resources, and we, hey, right here, we don't cost nothing, just give us the land. So they signed something called a Memoriam of Understanding, which I don't know if you guys understand that or are familiar with the term or not, but basically you go, you approach a, a park or a, a national park and you say, hey, this is what we're gonna do and this is what you're gonna do. You guys kind of get an understanding and we had a stewardship agreement with them. And like I said, we're the sole proprietors of that park or of that trail. If trees are down, if the trail gets grown up, if some kind of uh, if we go in, we will have trail love days on all these trails that I showed you. About once a month, we try to go around the whole circuit and we get a big group together and we go in, we clean up, we weed eat, we trim, where we need to do to maintain these trails. And once again, the organizations that, that were using their land don't care because we're free laborers. And which reads me to this. We're able to do a little with a lot, or excuse me, do a lot with a little. Because, like our member, our association is about two to three hundred people all together. Now, granted, there's still twenty or thirty of us that are doing it, but all together, there might be one guy to give five hours this year, and another guy be hundred hours next year. I mean, it just varies. But the thing is, we we are able to take very little resources and turn it into a little bit of economic development for the association or the group or the park that we're with, and we also get the fun out of it. Well, that's our return. We get out, we take our families, we take our friends, we go out, we ride, we have a good time, we bend up our knees, we dodge the trees, and all that good stuff. Path pillar is 150 acres we're going to build on. Long fall trail in our scope of improvement is 200 acres. The Hobson Grove, I just learned of this this last week. Hobson Grove is a park in Bowling, the city of Bowling Green, within the city limits. Right now, it's mostly golf course. And because of our results with our trails and our building and our resources that we put together over the last seven years, now keep in mind, this has only been going on about seven years, six or seven years. You see how many trails we built in that little sort of time? And now the city of Bondra is saying, hey, we got 200 acres, you want it? It's yours. Here we go again, but we need, we need resources. Uh, which takes me to jump ahead there. One of our developments is a dual slalom course. Uh, this is at the Riverfront Park. Like I said, it's a big development where we're wanting to improve, 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 blue ways, additional trailing. This is going to be a dual slalom where we can have events and improve skills. This is, you heard Troy talk about a pump track. I don't know if some of you ever seen one or not. But this is what it looks like. This is the opposite side of the landfill that we haven't used yet. It's just a gravel trail now, but when we get done with it and we get our resources together, this is what we want to do with it. Uh, once again, skills improvement, big events, brings in money when people pop, got pockets. And if you build it, we'll come. Kind of reiterate what I'm talking about. Twits of Oliver, uh, only been open a few months, already has double hikers, bikers, trail runners, already has the racing events that's going to increase the revenue for that area. The community around it are 100% supportive, more people are using it. You're improving your conservation of your green space because somebody come in and try to build it. As a matter of fact, one of the people that live adjacent to that trail come over one day and said, what are y'all doing? And we explained to him and he said, I'm, I'm tickled to death you guys are doing this because I don't want to see any more houses come up in this area. He says, you guys are doing it for something positive. Also, when you do this, you're increasing your demographic for the future. People are going to bring their kids. Those kids are going to bring their kids. Those kids are going to bring their fun, their friends. And eventually you're going to expand your demographics to, to maintain these places down to the line. Hey, Nikki. Yes, ma'am. We've got about three minutes left and we need to get questions. Okay. I just want to touch this and I'll just I'll stop it right here. One of the little statistics that I dug, I, I dug up, uh, this is from 2015, your fastest growing sports in the United States. 
On your left hand column it is adventure racing, off-road triathlons, uh, mountain biking, and BMXing. You see your percentage of growth in the last 2000 and since 2015. These are old statistics, I'm sure it's been On your right column, you see how much mountain bike is in the top five or six. But look at your top ones. Every one of them incorporates some kind of cycling. So cycling is like the new golf. Yeah, basically it. <laughs> well, speaking of that, that brings me to my question. Yes. Um, General Butler State Park. We tried to get the trails reestablished there to the high level that we could. We couldn't find a trail steward. The golf, course is, the golf course is gone. Right. So that's why I was asking. So you need somebody up there? We need a trail steward. So you find us a trail steward and we'll help you I actually uh, have meetings with trail. a couple of folks. So let me see if they know anybody that might be interested. They, they I was just up there yesterday. The 1994 NCAA National Mountain Bike Championship was at Butler State Park. Right. They used to have a world class trail system. <coughs> well, they went straight up the ski slope. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. I'll share it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I was just wondering do you have like a sample um, memorandum of understanding or stewardship agreement that we can look at? Because we've been in kind of talks Absolutely. with uh, Absolutely. wildlife management area. Mm -hmm. and That's part of that checklist of things we give communities is you'll have so, to have this and this yeah. and this. And yeah, because I'm sure there's things that they've not even thought of that we need to bring to their attention. Absolutely. So you can charge for an event but not admittance to the park and not be under liability? Well, the, uh, the events have to have their own event liability insurance. So any event that happens on the trail systems that we help maintain or build, that event, uh, if they're charging for that, they are required to, they have to buy event insurance for that. Day. And that's usually done by the organization <coughs> putting on or the promoters that are, that they hired to put the, the event on. Yeah. <coughs> so we're gonna wrap it up. Mickey, thank you for coming from Southwest Troy Thank you for coming from every direction. Um, I, as always, have an ask at the end of everything. I have two asks for everybody in this room. One is if you are not a member of the local mountain bike Kimbo organization, please join. It's $30 and you get a free sticker, or you buy a $30 sticker and you get a free membership, works out either way. Um, the other thing is, if you know somebody or some bodies or an organization that wants to invest in these trail systems because you can see the economic impact, please let us know. We will put their money to this very, very good use. So, anything else, Chris? Thank you. We do a lot. Yeah. Okay. A yeah. Basically, put things in perspective. I kind of have this all when it's put together. You know, your cities have these humongous parks with rail systems and interstates and all that. They're begging for that and they have this open land. They need, they want to build buildings. Basically, they don't have the resources. Basically, we are the resources. We're, we're all we're wanting is the, the, we, the, the place to build it. We got the tools, we got the manpower. Just give us a place and we'll build it and you'll see what happens to your community and grow. We have crazy people that will go there every day. Like we, we have a program for retired crazy people. We <laughs> send them out into the woods and we train them how to build mountain bikes. So we're keeping them out of bars and on the streets. Is 100 of the state covered by some chapter? Yes, and uh, like the the bluegrass chapter manages and does a lot for the whole eastern part of the state. Uh, I do a lot of work with Cave Run, uh, Cave Run area, the National Park Service, that whole area. We do a lot of stuff in Harlan County, Pike County, uh, Prestonsburg, and Floyd County uh, collaboratively. And if I can't go, we'll send somebody like Mickey there. We have a Vince Carmen. There's a host of us that now kind of travel all around the state. Uh, and we have just barely enough money that uh, I just gave to Neil a gas receipt yesterday. Yeah, so. I, I think that, I mean, honestly, Stephen, that's something that comes up. A lot of states have one big governing body for mountain biking. You'll notice road clubs don't and stuff. I am not a big fan of having one big governing body because it's very regional. Well, we not collaborate. Very regional. Like we right. came so up with MOUs and we shared well, it with the Southwest Coast. I've Western used it and then you're like holding the English. <laughs> well, the, there's Southwest mm -hmm. and then there's the Lincoln Trail area 
Uh, and if as need arises in the far, far western part of the state, yeah, I'm Steve. then, yeah, Steve. Well, <laughs> uh, you know, the, the need, uh, when the need comes up, we will form a chapter there, you know, if and when it, it happens. One, one quick. Do you guys use inmate labor? Uh, we have used it in some other areas, and it's my personal opinion is more trouble than it's worth. Uh, I had to sit through like a five hour video session and sign all these papers that I'm responsible for these folks. And three of the four years it worked out pretty good, but the fourth year we had a guy disappear for four hours. He showed back up, uh, but that kind of stressed me out. And they also don't work that well. You know, they're, they're not used to weed eating nonstop for three hours without taking a smoke break. You know, we are. <laughs> Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Hi, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Kentucky Cycling Connection series. The Kentucky Cycling YouTube channel is a volunteer effort aimed at promoting cycling in the Bluegrass region. You can support this work by sharing the videos on social media. Also, please like the video on YouTube and subscribe to the channel. Thanks.